Alrighty, so I've got part four of the Twilight of the Republic spoiler review. We got some really cool cards this week. Not too many, but I hope you like it. Uh, before we go, please hit that subscribe button. Helps out a ton. Go check out the Patreon if you want some more content from me. And here we go. So we're going to do the two leaders first again. So number one here is Captain Rex. This is a green heroism leader. It's a five cost deploy leader, which we like. He's got a front side action that costs two. And it says if a friendly unit attack this phase, create a clone trooper token. So that's pretty expensive of an action on top of having that prerequisite for having attacked with something. I like that this can make units, right? This is kind of like a grinding engine that lets you generate, you know, slightly below rate cards without having to spend cards. Two for a two, two is not something we would do very often, but when it doesn't cost a card, that's nice. I think the issue here is of course the cost of it and the fact that you have to attack first. So definitely it's gonna need to be in a go wide style deck that always has units to attack with to trigger this ability. Uh, but the more exciting part about this is the deploy. Now this is a two six deploy. Again, it's for five resources. He is a Republic clone trooper. When deployed, he makes a clone trooper. So it's the first leader that makes a unit when he deploys. He also says each other friendly trooper gets plus zero plus one. So he's making essentially a two three when he comes into play. Now that two three will be exhausted, but you get two bodies, you get four nine worth of stats, which is nice. Of course, him only being two power and the other unit being exhausted does limit the ability here for him to fight over the board. But it certainly is something that will give you some immediate act, uh, benefit just from the added health that it'll give to all the other units you have. Um, this is certainly a major build around kind of leader. It is a seems pretty good as like a core to a really go wide deck if something like that can be enabled. I still have my doubts as to whether or not like this coordinate style deck will be good enough just because of all the prerequisites of like always needing that extra unit. But certainly this will help turn on coordinate. So if we find some really powerful coordinate uh, units that like really exceed value uh, when you trigger it, right? Like that's the whole core here is that we need the coordinate units to be worth it. Uh, then this certainly can move that needle a little forward. Um, I'm definitely going to try to build around this because this is definitely a new style. This doesn't fit into any of like our normal heuristics yet. Uh, a deck like this could not exist with the first two sets, but certainly we might be able to get, see something like this exist now that we have Captain Rex, uh, a decent enabler for this kind of strategy. And we'll see if we can get more payoffs, especially. And the other leader, now this is for exploit, certainly. This is Newt Gunray. This is a villainy uh, vigilance leader. He's a six cost deploy. Now he has a front side action that says, if two or more friendly units were defeated this phase, create a battle droid token. So again, the, tro the droids are one ones. Uh, I forgot to mention the clones are two twos, but the, for Captain Rex, but the, the droids are one one. Uh, and of course his leader side, again, six deploy. He's a two eight separatist official that says on attack, create a battle droid token. So we'll start the, with the front side. What I'm seeing this is you're trying to get a rebate on your exploit, right? You're gonna ideally be building a deck around having a lot of fodder units. You can sacrifice those units to exploit something nice into play. Then Newt Gunray rebuys one of those droids that you basically sacrifice. So he helps you keep that engine going forward. This is all about maintaining enough units so that you can keep exploiting because these decks are probably going to falter if at any point their board gets completely controlled and they have no units. So it's really nice when your units either die to more units or here you get Gunray. So he, you can keep, uh, you're basically getting like a one exploit discount on all the units. So similar to Dooku who he's enabling the exploit in a different way. He's giving you more pet, more ways to like, play cards for cheaper out of your hand, new gun rate is giving you a rebate on the cards that you're already gonna be paying cheaper out of your hand. The ability is pretty strong, but of course needing two or more friendly units to die. Again, this is gonna be really tough to evaluate until we really get these cards on the table and like try to figure out how to build these exploit decks. His leader side, 
I think is very underwhelming. He's a 2-8 for 6. That is not going to help you in the slightest in terms of board control. It is a very poor stat line at a pretty expensive deploy. His on attack creates a battle droid token. I mean, that's fine. That's like not a that's a pretty decent on attack trigger, but I'm I'm not particularly happy with his leader side and I think that's right now what I think will limit this uh the most uh i would certainly go to dooku first if i was trying to build an exploit deck because that one looks to be more robust a little more powerful uh but nuke gunray is certainly going to be an option for building around exploit and we'll see if it's held back too much by his leader stats which i think probably it will be but not 100 percent sure all right Next, we got Clone Commander Cody. It's a five cost command unit for four Republic Clone Trooper. He has Overwhelm himself. He also has Coordinate. Each other friendly unit gets plus one, plus one gains Overwhelm. Uh, so this doesn't seem that good to me personally. I mean, we I've seen General Veers and General Dodonna, both who have a um, pretty easier time triggering their plus one, plus one, both not see very much play. Uh, this costs five. Five for a four-four is just sad, honestly. It's, of course, this can give you immediate board impact if you play it and you trigger the coordinate. And now everything else in play is buffed, but he's gonna be a pretty easy thing to get off the board. Um, so uh, again, like it's all about this coordinate stuff. Of course, at a critical mass, it might work. It's just this is not the payoff I'm looking for. I don't think this is good enough as a payoff. Uh, it's. It seems like we're paying too much for something that you could have made, like could play for a little cheaper, right? Uh, the Donna being like the most easy parallel here, him costing four for a four four with a very similar ability. Um, yeah, starting kind of not so high on this one. All right, this is a sword and shield maneuver. It's a two cost heroism event. Jedi Republic Tactics got a lot of traits. It says e give each friendly trooper unit raid one for this phase. Give each friendly Jedi unit sentinel for this phase. Uh, this looks like a very thematic card. Uh, I don't think it's going to be any good at all. This looks a little win more to me. You need like Jedis, you need troopers, you need a lot of troopers and like one really big Jedi. It just seems like a lot to try to make work. All right, Mr. Bones is a one drop for double aggression it's a 3-1 fringe droid it says on attack if you have no cards in your hand you may deal three damage to a ground unit so one cost 3-1 is a decent stat line that stat line gets played in aggressive decks we see greedo we see death star stormtrooper these are cards that like see play in hard aggro decks this being in double aggression of course limits how much you're going to play it uh, the ability is nice upside of course it's not gonna be super easy to trigger but the most obvious place to kind of slide it in would be into like a double red kylo deck who tends to empty his hand pretty quickly all in all it's not like a majorly exciting card it's still just like basically a one cost three one which you know exists already and sometimes gets played sometimes doesn't uh it's not fantastic by any means it's just going to give you like more cheap one drops that are playable and at a certain point that might be good enough I, I do worry a little bit about the one health units in general coming into the next set when a lot of cards make 1-1 one, one droids that are going to be uh, eating up your X-1s. All right, next is Geonosis Patrol Fighter. It's a five cost cunning space unit. It has the Separatist Vehicle Fighter trait. It's a 3-2. It has Exploit 2, so it can cost 3 or 1 if you sacrifice a couple units. And it says, when played, you may return a non-leader unit that costs three or less to its owner's hand. So it gives you like a mini waylay when you play it. Of course, it can only bounce up things that cost three or less, uh, which limits it. But it is like decent, right? I mean, we know Cantina Bouncer is a good card, right? So that's like the closest parallel because they both cost, both cost five. Cantina Bouncer has no restriction, while this can be cheaper to play it can cost three or one uh again the exploit stuff really tough to evaluate this is in yellow where i haven't seen like that much payoff in yellow exploit it's been more in green and blue so this is going to move you into a different kind of exploit this is a tempo based exploit deck i don't know how viable that looks right now to me it looks very unviable to me right now just because the card pool hasn't really supported like a tempo exploit deck i feel like exploit is a lot of 
negative tempo plays and then you do like a positive tempo play by playing something really big but this is not very big and it is not catching you up it's just delaying a little bit it's going to mitigate it can only bounce little things so of course it's not going to like be major resource advantage when you get that bounce effect uh again i think the card's pretty solid i just don't know if the a yellow shell with exploit is like the first place i'd be looking all right here's a cool one this is emphasis nest we got a second emphasis uh, this is a seven cost cunning heroism unit it is a five seven with saboteur and it says when played and on attack you may return an enemy non-leader unit with less power than this unit to its owner's hand so without any buffs it can return four power or less units which definitely limits again how good of like a tempo play this can be seven cost is kind of this magic cost for a lot of really really powerful cards in this game so this is the first analog here we'll always have to look at what cards you can play in this color at that cost and that's han solo and han solo is a six six with ambush so he can definitely not only remove something but he removes it permanently unlike an enfist who is just a bounce also han can kill big things he can kill leaders uh Enfys doesn't do any of that and bonus here is that it's an oh one played and on attack now it would be nice if you could do that together uh if you somehow made this ambush but that's not going to be super clean to do you can definitely do it with like timely intervention uh but is this better than something like han is it better than fennec shan both those units can kill something much bigger than Enfys can and Enfys doesn't even do it permanently so I think I'd rate her kind of below most of that stuff, although the benefit of her being able to bounce things that are in a space arena definitely is interesting. Uh, but she can't kill leaders and she can't bounce big things. Uh, so you really need to count on that bounce being impactful enough. And I am not sure it will be. All right, we've got the last rare base. This is Shadow Collective Camp. It's the red one. It's 25 health. It says, when you deploy a leader, draw a card. You know, I like drawing cards for free, but that's a steep cost. It's five health to draw a card. Um, I can't imagine this being good enough, unfortunately. Like, I am, I rate rare bases pretty highly. Like, I notably look for any excuse to play a rare base over the 30 health base. I love inherent card advantage that you get from these rare bases most of them can give you a card's worth of value which i really appreciate and this is like actually just a card worth of value this is giving you a card for free uh of course you do have to pay five health and i i don't think it'll end up being worth it a lot of these bases also look like maybe they're going to be a lot better in twin sun i mean they are going to be better in twin suns when you have two leaders uh and maybe part of the design process here was to give twin suns bases a little love all right next we got battle droid legion it's a nine cost villainy unit it is a six five separatist droid trooper as exploit two it says when defeated create three battle droid tokens so exploit two means it can cost seven or five if, with dooku it can go down to three if you add, give it another exploit the nice thing here is like you kind of consolidate all your droids into a big droid and then when the big droid dies you get a bunch of more little droids I don't think the payoff here is good enough unfortunately it's just like a lot of hoops to go in and then you like get a six five and then it dies and you get a bunch of one ones and like that's fine like i like that the units die into more units it means your exploit stuff never really fizzles or runs out of gas but i certainly hope we can do better than this guy all right another exploit one this is a seven cost vigilance unit it's multi-troop transport it's a three six separatist vehicle tank in vigilance has exploit two it says on attack create a battle droid token yeah this this is not very good this of course can keep getting you more units uh but the stats here are way too poor to justify uh the work you have to put in to get it out all right this is rune hako this is a two cost vigilance villainy unit it is a three two separatist official has one played if a friendly unit was defeated this phase you may give a unit minus one minus one for this phase this card is awesome it is just flat out awesome this is one of the best cards probably we've seen revealed so far i know it doesn't look that flashy but blue villain getting a three power a good three power two drop 
is big get like this is so much better than viper probe droid uh it's not even close you are getting a spotted a card with a very low floor a car a three power unit that can help you trade early on that has the kind of ceiling that creates a two for one potentially if that minus one minus one can finish something off or even enable a positive trade for you in some way it's not the easiest trigger to get but because you're spotted a three two for two uh you're basically free rolling this ability in a lot of cases this being a villainy means it could come out of something like darth vader uh this coming out of vader and then being able to potentially shrink something if something else died that turn is really really nice this is an official which means this can curve straight into emperor's royal guard this is the first three power official that we can play on two cost i believe uh that's a pretty big get for anyone trying to play emperor's royal guard uh it is separatist tag which means dooku can give this exploit which means this can cost zero and then also self-trigger its ability because you've sacrificed something so something was already defeated uh all in all the package here floor super high just because you know two cost three two it's a it's a stat line we would be comfortable playing in a lot of cases in blue villainy decks because we are reactive decks we are not aggressive decks so the two health is way less important when you are the one initiating trades it's not something i would want to play in an aggro deck usually because your opponent would have an easier time removing it than something with three health but in a control style deck where you are on the defense three power is great to have on a turn one play and you are now playing a two drop that doesn't lose steam later in the game it can actually be very valuable to play this later in the game so this is fantastic it's got all the stuff we want including the traits that can help it in synergy based decks so awesome card all right next is nameless valor it's a one cost upgrade in command it says attached to a token unit and it gets plus two plus two and gives it overwhelm you know the, the rate is good one for plus two plus two is above rate but only on tokens uh i don't love it and that's about all i got all right this is a really cool one this is a legendary so it's a cunning event it costs three it's called now there are two of them and it is a trick so there we go java can find this for your deck building needs it says if you control exactly one unit play a non-vehicle unit from your hand that shares a trait with that unit you control it costs five less so five less but you paid three so it's a two discount so this is is in that bucket of cards like sneak attack triple dark raid unnatural life which we saw revealed recently of you cheating out a card at some kind of discount of course you are paying an extra card to do that right so you are two for oneing yourself in a way you play this and you have to play the other card but you're getting value right you're getting a two resource discount and how big can that two resource discount be varies but when you compare this to the other cards we talked about sneak attack triple dark raid unnatural life like this is permanent the unit stays so in the other cases it's much easier to enable it because sneak attack you just any card from your hand triple dark raid you get to look through the top of your deck and find something a natural life something died you get to bring it back here you have to have it in your hand and it has to match a trait with something in play and you can only have one unit in play so it's like multiple restrictions but of course your ceiling here is a lot higher because you permanently keep the unit now the unit also doesn't come in ready like those other cards so you're not getting immediate value unless of course you get to cheat out something with ambush so let's think very quickly about some stuff that you could do so job of the hut is an underworld you play him on four on turn five five resources you can now play maul from your hand if job is the only unit you have in play that seems pretty cool because that is a two resource cheat in fact this would act this card would actually cost one less because of java and then you get maul who on top of doing everything that he normally does is now going to be able to pour that damage onto the Jabba, who's likely not going to be removed uh, because he's a 2 8. So that seems awesome. Other things we want to look at something like Count Dooku, Vader, like all these seven drops that are really powerful Luke, Han. Like you look for a card that costs four so that you can next turn play those big things, right? Like Kanan can go into Luke, right? If Kanan's the only unit you have in play. Um, common traits right now that i think you can look at are like underworld force or jedi uh potentially bounty hunters right you can like 
turn one, play a Bounty Hunter, turn two, play a Zuckus. Now it's not going to ambush or anything, but potentially that's interesting. Uh, I'm really most excited about doing this with the units that do something when they come into play. So that's usually like those big seven drops that either like do something like Luke, remove something when they play it, or have ambush like Maul or Vader. Uh, that seems like the biggest get here because then you kind of make up the, the card disadvantage that you had just by having to play this, right? So you two for one yourself, but you immediately got some big value from the unit you played. Um, you also want to look at leaders, especially that match other big units so like boba is a big one right he costs five and he's an underworld so any bounty hunter so you can like he can turn into a maul uh you look at sabine she's a rebel so can we find like a seven drop rebel if you wanted to do like yellow red combo sabine uh but you can do this for any leader of course like kylo is a force and he costs four so he can actually go into that seven and play something like any of those force units right he he actually can get play dooku we can play molly can play vader they all have force traits so it's all really interesting there's a lot of upside here it is very narrow because of like all the conditions you have to play but it's gonna be fun to try to build around this first place to look i think is jabba the hut simply because jabba can find this card and make it cost one less so you can actually jabba into an eight drop the next turn so if we find some eight massive eight drop that matches jabba's traits that is going to be a pretty big deal. Uh, but this is a really cool card overall. And it seems like a pretty exciting legendary, even if it doesn't completely dominate. All right, next we've got Malevolence. This is a nine cost Vigilance Villainy space unit. It is a 7-7 seven, seven Separatist Vehicle Capital Ship, and it has Exploit 4. That's a lot of Exploit. It has Restore 2. And it says, when played, give an enemy unit minus four, minus zero for this phase. It can't attack for this phase. So that ability basically just, you know, one thing is locked up. Not only does it lose its attack, can't even attack you. So, like, you, if you want, you can, like, try to trade into it. It's not hitting back as hard. It does work notably on leaders, which is pretty nice. Not a lot of ways to kind of lock down leaders in this game. Exploit four is massive, right? This can cost one. A one cost seven, seven that does this is pretty nice. Uh, so all in all, that's, like, a pretty decent package. Uh, you know, nine drop is I mean, like, this is not as good at nine as like Avenger, right? It's not even close, but the whole idea here is that you exploit and if exploit is good, this seems like a decent top end for that. Now it's going to get punished pretty hard by like bounce effects or any removal, right? That's a big issue with these big exploit cards that you like wipe your whole board to play them. And then if they get removed and they're not get, like, that's a problem, especially when they're not like giving you a rebate on any of the units you exploited, but this does seem decently strong uh, in like a controlling shell with exploit uh, if you can enable it. And being in blue and with this exploit, you also want to look at the big uh, exploiting uh, board wipe because that gives you like two angles. Either like you want to remove everything or you can, if your opponent doesn't like overextend enough, then you can bam, drop a big unit instead of blasting the board. All right, next is a one cost. It's Obedient Vanguard. It's in command. It's a 1-1 one, one Separate Destroyed Trooper. So it's a non-villainy Separate Destroyed. Has raid one. It says when defeated, you may give a trooper unit plus two plus two for this phase. I mean, obviously it's it's like a little aggro droid that also like gives you some value when it dies so you can exploit it. Um, I don't, I think there's like better little fodder units most of the time than this, of course. There is an angle in this set about like an aggro droid deck. Uh, we've seen a few cards that want to like dig in a little more into like uh, going wide and dealing damage as opposed to just like trying to combo out. Um, and this maybe fits there, but I think unlikely. All right, next is an upgrade clone cohort cost two. It's in aggression. It says attached unit gains raid two and when defeated create a clone trooper token and it gives plus zero plus zero. So I don't think this card in general is very good. I think Ray 2 is nice, but like for two costs, not getting any stats up front is just really, really weak. Of course, the unit, when the unit dies, you get spotted a clone and that's nice. Uh, the only place I'd be looking to play this right now is Grand Inquisitor, just because you essentially can get two triggers of Ray 2 in one turn. So it's kind of like potentially doing four damage. And then your weakened unit will also just like give you a unit when it dies. So you get a little extra value there. So this seems like 
maybe in like a combo-ish Grand Inquisitor thing, this could work past that. I don't think so. And next up is Droid Cohort. So we got Clone Cohort. Now we get Droid Cohort. This is a one cost cunning upgrade it says attach unit gains when defeated create a battle droid token and it gives plus one plus one I, I think this is generally better than the previous one we just saw you get one one for one which is like not great i mean that was car that card exists with like snapshot reflexes although you get upfronted an actual attack with that or like the smuggling compartment which gets you rebuying resources but you get a little bonus here by like when the unit dies you get a, a, a little droid uh, so you get a friend when your unit dies. Again, I, I'm not super impressed by this. It's like interesting-ish, but like probably not a constructed level power. All right, that's it for part four. Hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think of the cards. Uh, hit that subscribe, hit that like, check out the Patreon, all those things. And until next time, take care.